All right. I hope everyone is having a great day and that the Hashi Talks are going well. I am Michael, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about FedRAMP today. So, with that being said, uh, what is FedRAMP? FedRAMP is the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. Um, it is a standardized government-wide program. It's designed to empower agencies to use modern cloud technologies through federal marketplace. You might be wondering why do we need this? Well, before we had FedRAMP, all of the different agencies had different programs to go through. Therefore, it was really hard for one company to sell their product, cloud-based product, to multiple different agencies. It was a lot of hoops to go through. So to make it easier, we have FedRAM, right? And so to list a cloud product or service on the federal marketplace, an authority to operate must be attained first. And so um, a lot of the times you're gonna find that when doing FedRAM, why would we go through the process of updating a current architecture? Like you have a commercial product, you're in the cloud and you want to sell this to the government workplace, but now you have to take everything you already have on the commercial side and update it to make sure that it's compliant, right? So when I do this, when uh, we can, <clears throat> or I go through this process of updating the current architecture, when we only need resources and the authorization boundary to be compliant, right? So not to mention there's less clutter, less separation boundaries, and uh, easier maintenance after we achieve an ATM. So I've mentioned ATO a few times here. Uh, let's take a look real quick at what an ATO is. Is an authority to operate. It's something we have to talk about after getting an authority to operate. It's continuous monitoring. And how do we get started in the whole process? And so, like I said before, after being issued the ATO, the process of continuous monitoring begins. You have gone through or gone through the process, you have been audited, and now all right, you have an ATO, but you can't slack. You can't get lazy and let changes slip through that are going to let you or, or, or remove you from being compliant. So um, in our experience, my rewriting an established service or product is, is quite a lengthy progress, process. Thus, we find ourselves working in new cloud provider accounts often. And when doing this, we're, we're starting from zero. So we realized that to speed this up, we needed a starting point, something we could standardize, which in this case, a landing zone, and it would help us streamline this process of going from no account to deploying workloads in a federal compliant or federally compliant environment. And so with that, Let's talk a little bit about AWS landing zones. A well-architected, sorry, a landing zone is a well-architected multi-account AWS environment that is scalable and secure. Right, and like I said, it's very important for us because it's a starting point to quickly launch applications and deploy workloads. Because, as I mentioned earlier, we are starting from uh, a greenfield environment quite often. Next thing is we want this to be secure and compliant. I'll talk a little bit about the SRA in a moment to uh, kind of go over that, that secure aspect. And then, like I said, it's a FedRAMP. Um, it's FedRAMP, NIST, PCI compliant. And uh, if we're going to be able to do all of these things, we want our landing zone to have that off the rip instead of having to go back and fix things later. There's a plethora of options for AWS landing zones. We have the landing zone accelerator. We have Control Tower just by itself, doing all the click ops. Or we have AFC, which is the CloudFormation version of AFT. A few more options I have not listed. Another thing is that AFT is AWS, well, it can be AWS native, and it provides a pipeline for deploying and maintaining infrastructure as code. And another great plus is that it is relatively low priced. As I mentioned earlier, it does use Control Tower on the inside. So uh, if, you're, if you're looking at using Control Tower, you want to go a little bit further, I highly recommend AFT. And with that, this talk is going to be how to go from AFD to ATO. It'll be achieving AWS native FedRAMP through Terraform. All right, and I, Michael Greenlaw, I'm a co-founder and senior consultant at Hanabyte. And if you want to reach out to me, you can contact me at michael at hanabyte.com. Or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love to talk about this stuff, so please feel, reach, feel free to reach out. Don't hesitate. Let's, let's have a chat. All right. AWS AFT. All right, so AFT sets up a Terraform pipeline to help provision and customize accounts control tower. Gives the advantage of Terraform-based account provisioning while allowing us to govern our accounts to control tower. It also supports Terraform Cloud, Terraform Enterprise, and Terraform Open Source. It does use a GitOps model so that when we apply changes or want to create an account, automatically recognizes those, pulls those in, and creates the account for us. 
It also works for integrates with tools like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and et cetera. So let's check out the AFT workflow. First, we have a new account request, right? This would be something I would initiate. And what I would do is I have an AFT account request repository. I go in, I make a change to the code and say, I would like to track a new account. This is recognized once again through the GitOps module. And there we have the account request pipeline. So the pipeline kicks off after we push the code up, and then it adds in some information into a DynamoDB database, and then the request trigger function kicks off. So this is control hour update, sorry, control tower update. For example, adding a new account, right? would say, yes, this is a CT update. And we would move on to the account request queue. This then moves to the account request processor and we are thrown into the control tower management loop where we have a account being issued or an account being vended, if you will. And then uh, it kicks off into the account provisioning invoker. So there's another flow to this, however, right? like once we have created this new account request, we also need a way to invoke customizations on the account, right? Because the AFT gives us that capability to create or add customizations to our account. So if you see towards the bottom, we have an invoke customizations request. What happens here is I add code to either a global or account customizations level repository, and then I invoke a state machine that kicks off the loop we see at the bottom. And in turn, uh, the state machine kicks off pipelines pipelines then make changes to our accounts and that is how EFD works in a nutshell. I also mentioned the EWS SRA earlier or the security reference architecture. We use the AWS SRA as a guideline. It's been described as a holistic set of guidelines for deploying the full complement of AWS security services in a multi-account environment as a quote directly from AWS. The good news here is that we can use AFT and still adhere to the SRA. Um, while it'll be at our own version, it is still built off of that SRA. And like I said, it just fits perfectly with everything. So it's uh, quite a quite a nice tool to use when it has all this stuff built in. Next, let's start with Control Tower. So to get this kicked off, uh, it's not just plug and play with Terraform. We do have to create a few accounts first. Obviously, you're going to want your payer or management account. And what we do after we have that is we need to agree into Control Tower and we need to create a security OU and an infrastructure OU. There will be a audit and logging account in the security OU. Those are created by default when setting up a landing zone with Control Tower. And then we will add an AFT management account, not to be confused with the payer management account, an AFT management account in the infrastructure or infra OU. As you can see there, we have on the right-hand side, the foundational OU is security that is going to be pre-populated. And then I added in the infrastructure or infra OU towards the bottom. And over here, we're going to have to add another account, right? Like you can see, we're adding in a log archive and an audit account. But the problem here is that we're missing one, right? We, we need four accounts. And one of them would be the AFT management account, like I said. And so what we do is we go to account factory and then we create the AFT management account under the previously created infrastructure OU. And once this process is complete, we can start preparing for AFT deployment. All right, so AFT preparation and apply. So our first order of business is to store the state of AFT in the payer account, right? Like it's going to track all of the stuff that AFT is setting up, the code repositories, um, let's see the code pipelines, use state machines and things like that. So it has to be run from the payer account. In this case, I prefer to just create buckets by hand. I start off with a, a basic bucket and then I add my policies in. I have created a pretty basic policy on the right hand side, which just the delete, get, list bucket, put object. Um, this will work. And if you wanna make it a little bit more secure, feel free, go ahead and edit as you will. But yeah, this should work. A uh, little copy and paste there will get you on your way. Now, dive or take off. So our first part of the module is the source. As we all know, this is going to pull from GitHub and it's going to pull that specific version of the code that we want. So as you can see, we created those four control tower accounts, right? Um, I've removed the account numbers, but you can see the control tower management account ID. You can see the log archive account ID. 
the audit account ID and the AFT management account ID arguments. We will need all four of those. They are required. Then we also need a home region and a secondary region. So um, what we have to do here is go over through AWS and get our account numbers, populate that in. And then our next step here, oh, we have some optional parameters. Um, when I say optional, these can get kind of in depth. There's a lot more information on this on the GitHub page uh, that you can find at AWS-IA. Uh, the optional parameters for me are OSS. I was trying to do this as cheaply as possible. It is an example, right? And then we also wanted to use code commit as our VCS provider. And then last but not least, there's uh, quite a few optional feature flags. So uh, once again, you will have to go through and look at all the feature flags you want to use. I'm um, just note really quickly that if you are using Guff Cloud, uh, you will have trouble with the AFT VBC endpoints and a few other things, but the, mainly in this case, uh, there's a, a line, things like line 234 and a data.tf file somewhere that has an endpoint that doesn't work. So that's that's going to cause a little bit of an issue for you if you're in Guff Cloud. But yeah, so with that, uh, you can apply this. This is going to create over 300 resources, and it, it can take quite some time. So uh, you know, someone say enough time for a coffee break, if you will. Um, and now we're moving on to the account request section. So we have the three Cs, code commit, code pipeline, and cloning. What happens when AFT runs is that it creates four repositories. There's the AFT account request, the AFT account customizations, the AFT account provisioning customizations, and the AFT global customizations. The first thing we want to focus on, focus on however, is the account request customization, sorry, the account request, just the account request, followed by provisioning. And finally, we work with the global and account customizations. Next, we have code pipeline. AFT creates two pipelines. At first, it'll be the CTFT account request and the CFT account provisioning customizations. Um, these two pipelines use a GitOps model, as mentioned earlier. And once code is added to either the, uh, sorry, once code is added to either code commit repo, the pipeline kicks off and runs. And last but not least, we have cloning. Um, all of the code commit repos are empty to start. Right, so we're gonna have to clone them down and add code that has been pre-provided by AWS or HashiCorp if you look at any of the tutorials. Um, so what you do, or what I do in this case, is I clone down the code commit repository using git remote code commit, and then I'll create a temp folder. I go into the temp folder and I copy down the resources from AWS or HashiCorp, and then I, I remove the example folder and, and copy that code into so it's like the temp the temp code into the code commit repo so that it has all that we need. I mean, like I said, I remove the example folder and then I create a main.tf file in the Terraform subfolder. All right, and as you can see here on the left-hand side, this is what my AFT account request looks like. We have the Terraform folder, and sorry, folder, and then we have modules. That is correct, leave the modules there. It will reference that in the code coming up. And uh, we have a backend.ginger file that you'll need to edit. We've, I mentioned that too as well, but there's our main.tf. Right? And this code has simply been copied over, as you can see from GitHub on the right hand or on the right side, right middle. Um, and I've removed that examples folder that I mentioned in the previous slide. All right, so let's make the accounts. All right, and so as we can see here, our source pulls from the modules folder at the TF root. Like I said, we want to leave that module folder because it is absolutely necessary. And the next, we add in the control tower parameters so that AFT can use control tower to revision and maintain our new account. You'll notice if you use control tower, these are a lot of the same things that you use to initially create your account. So that shouldn't be uh, too abnormal. It should be quite familiar. Okay. And then we add account tags and management parameters as necessary. I've kind of left mine, left mine pretty basic example things. Um, I'll let you fill those in as you like. Then one thing I want to say is to take note of the account customizations name value or uh, argument, if you will, in the at the very bottom of the page. Uh, this needs to match the folder we'll be using later in our AFT account customizations repo. So yeah. Just to, it's a big one there. If you, uh, anything messes up while you're doing this, feel free to look back at this and see maybe the, the folder name is not the same. Another thing, I believe I did mention the backend.gins file. 
um, once again, I think that should be coming up in a moment here. Uh, uh, we'll need to change a the required version that the backend engine fills in as a as of a recent update. It seems to error out, so we'll have to specify that version. And I will say, uh, you know, you, you've seen here I've added in a shared account, right? You can also add in your EFT management account. You can add in maybe like a transit account for networking. Uh, you can track your other accounts as well, the the audit and logging. All of those work. All you have to do is push up or, or copy this, add in the correct information, um, change the module name, and push it up, and it will go through the process of adding those into the the pipeline workflow we saw earlier. And so if next. One thing I wanted to say as well, you can see the uh, at the very bottom of the screen here, there's a CTAFT account request. That is the pipeline. It should look just like this after you've pushed your code up. It'll be in progress. All right. And ah, yes. Back in Dungeon. As you can see on line six, we have specified the required version. Uh, this is using the TF underscore version uh, to plug that value in, but it, it's broken in a, a recent release. So. Um, this will most likely be fixed at your time of viewing, but for now, I just wanted to let everyone know and be aware that this creates a few problems for us. All right, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes, customizations. So, what are the types? As you noticed earlier, I mentioned a few pipelines and repos, one of those being provisioning customizations. And so AFT provides flexibility to customize the provisioning process for new accounts and integrate with systems prior to the account customization stage. But we won't be doing any provisioning customizations to start, right? This is only an example. So the only time we'll run this is to create our step functions. All right. And the next, we have global customizations, right? So these are used to customize all provisioned accounts with customer defined resources, right? So we're saying here is that each account created with AFT gets its own pipeline, right? And each pipeline has a global customization stage that references this code in the global customization repo. Thus, to apply globally, we make one change in that global repo, and then we run the pipelines for each account to make sure that change is applied. And last but not least, we have the account customizations. So this is used to customize any provisioned account with customer-defined resources. Right. And so this is the third stage in each account pipeline, and it's to apply account level customizations, meaning changes that only apply to that account, right? So if I wanted to apply or wanted to apply a password policy to my global customizations, I would add that to the global. I would then run all my pipelines. However, if I only want to make a change to say our shared account, I would go into the shared folder, make a change in the account customizations, and then push that up and run the pipeline. So it only makes the change to the shared account. See. Next thing we have, uh, this is a bit confusing. It, it's the same process as before, right? As you can see um, in the, the GitHub picture towards the middle, we have the AFT account request folder, right? We, all we've done is we've already copied this over, right? We, we pulled the repo from AWS, and then we copied the code from AFT account request and then moved the files into that, that AWS repo, and we push it up so that our changes are, are made and, and uh, pulled in with AFT. And so, it's time to do that with the other three code commit repositories, right? So I clone each of the pot repositories from code commit. I'm gonna make a temp folder. I'm gonna go into that temp folder and then clone the AFT code from GitHub into there. And what I'm gonna do next is move the files from that temp folder. You know, if I have, say for example, the first repo I copy down is provisioning customizations from code commit, I would then move the files from the provisioning customizations in GitHub over to code commit, right? And don't forget, when doing all of these, the backend.jinja issue uh, from earlier, that's gonna happen with each one of these in this case. Like I said, it most likely will be fixed in the future, but as of right now, it's gonna create a little bit of an issue. And you know, then again, maybe I've done something wrong and uh, I could be pro proven wrong. Like I said, reach out, let me know. I would love to talk about AFT. <laughs> yeah, and so, before you push, I, I want to make a, a note here. You could technically push to the global or the account customizations really quickly, but the first thing I want to do is push to the account provisioning customizations repository in CoCommit because you're going to kick off a pipeline. That's going to create some step functions for us that will allow us to trigger the pipeline for our global and account level customizations. All right, so let's look at these state machines really quickly. 
right? So uh, if you haven't already, go ahead, push up your code for the AFT account provisioning customization repo. And it's gonna kick off the second pipeline. I think it's CT account provisioning customizations. And what's gonna happen is it will create state machines. So after a few minutes of letting that run, um, you'll be able to go look at our state machine. You can check it out immediately. Notice that there's only, I think it's two or three. And once we're done with that run of the pipeline, we should have four, right? So pushing the provisioning code kicks off the account provisioning customization pipeline, which in turn creates the four machines so to the right. The big one here for us is going to be the AFT and vote customization state machine. Like I said, it's what we'll use to cook off pipeline jobs uh, using the format seen on the right. Um, we don't want to run this now, but what you would do is you would go into AFT and vote customizations, and then you would do a new execution. And we have to use the code down here kind of towards the bottom middle that will uh, target the account, and we have a target value of like just the account number. So, right along. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been told this talk is uh, very technical and quite boring. So, uh, you know, we had to add Mr. Worldwide, um, you know, peak humor, right? So, uh, yeah, just spicing it up a little bit. Um, but continuing on here, we'll use I am account password policies as an example of how global customizations work. That's why I referenced the earlier because that's how I'm going to be showing you how to do this. And so the first thing we're gonna do is add an im.tf file to the AFT global customizations slash Terraform folder. It should look just like in the photo. And then we're gonna populate that file with a code seen on the right. And so uh, this is just a basic im account password policy resource. Um, it's, it's pretty much the example resource, right? And then we have a few uh, parameters we set ourselves. That's all that needs to be in here. There, there's, there's nothing else to do for this. It will apply globally. Um, once you're done, go ahead and push those changes up. And next, we have the account customizations. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is rename the AFT account customizations folder. Uh, There's still gonna be an account template subfolder in here that we wanna change to be shared. We want to change to have the name shared. Why do we wanna do that? Because of the, the argument we referenced earlier, when you're doing your AFT account request, we need to know we need AFT to know what folder it's going to be in. So if that was say, for example, shared to, AFT wouldn't be able to find it. Uh, and that's the same reason that's just like with account template. AFT is not going to be able to find it, and that's exactly why we changed it. And then I'm going to add a file called ebs.tf to the AFT account customizations slash shared slash terraform folder. Just note we're going a little bit deeper than in the previous. Uh, customizations folders with the shared slash Terraform. And so what we're going to do first here is we're going to turn on EBS encryption by default, right? Very basic EBS resource. Um, note the, the data source at the top. I believe I'm going to be pulling that in in one of my policies later. I, I'm not entirely sure it made it into this slide. And then we're going to create a KMS key, a pretty basic KMS key here. And uh, we're going to be using this to encrypt our volumes you can see with the AWS EBS default KMS key example. And last but not least, like I said, we're gonna create and attach a policy to the KMS key. Um, you're not gonna be able to see my policy here. It's quite long and, and quite frankly, I think we are uh, all capable of creating this KMS policy. And I, I just don't wanna include a, a slide with nothing but policy code on it. So um, once again, like I said, if you have trouble here, let me know. Don't hesitate to reach out. I will gladly share the policy I have. I, I've got example policies and I we will have a blog coming out soon with the second part of this that goes a bit more in depth than this presentation will. So yeah, a few examples to go off of there. Right. And so once that's done, we can push all of these changes, right? We push our global, we push our global changes, and then we push our account customization changes. So yes, like I said, we push it. And then I should note these changes won't automatically take effect. That we've invoked the state machine, right? Which we talked about earlier. So to invoke the customizations, we're gonna run the AFT invoke customization state machine using the example code on the right, right? You wanna ensure that your account number matches the account number of your shared account created in the infrastructure of you by FT. So when you go ahead and you create that account being AFT, you're gonna have to go back, pick out the account number and make sure you bring it here because if you don't use that, it'll trigger against a different account and it won't see the code nothing's gonna happen. I might have a successful run, that's gonna happen. And so um, your first run here is gonna be a bit time consuming. 
Um, you'll notice after a few minutes, the pipeline's running, it slowly starts to move. Uh, you can go into your state machine after you kick it off. You'll see a bunch of the different stages that it goes through. And uh, it'll get stuck for a minute on the, I think it's the second or third stage. And once it goes through, it's creating your pipeline at this point, right? It has to create another pipeline for you specifically for that account. So it just takes a few minutes. And then after that, once you have your pipeline created, it's usually like five, six minutes for the pipeline to run each time. And uh, once again, if you need a code example of how to start your execution, this is exactly how I would start my account if my account was that number. All right. So I'm going to go through a bit of a recap here. Um, what we've done so far is we have created four accounts and control tower. And we then used AFT to build out a pipeline and add in more accounts, right? So we, we now have a shared account on our, on top of our, sorry, a shared, yeah, we have a shared account on top of our four initial accounts. That shared account has had a pipeline run against it that applied a global customization, right, of a password policy. You can go into the console and see these changes for yourself. And then it has also added in, like I said, the, um, uh, the EBS change, that is a uh, encryption at rest control that is going to help you with compliance in a few different spaces that I'll talk about in a moment. But so, yeah, we've gone from literally nothing, right? We, we started with a payer account and we have now in a, a very short span of time spun up a entire landing zone where we're able to go through and deploy infrastructure as code and we can begin using our Terraform pipelines to build out stuff like code pipelines and code build projects, right? And then, uh, begin deploying our workloads. Okay. That's it. We said with that, we've successfully created a landing zone. We've an implemented control that satisfies multiple levels of compliance, right? Encryption at rest and EBS volume supply, uh, satisfies a few things. You feel free to look up the ones that are missing, but uh, yeah, that, that's, you're going from zero to control and absolutely, or sorry, zero to a, a, a federal control in absolutely no time. Um, so using Terraform and AFT, we're able to expedite creation of a landing zone, implement controls, and use state to ensure our environment stay compliant, right? We can go back through, like, you got to remember, obtaining the ATO is the only, is not the only part of this process, right? We have to maintain, sorry, yeah, I, I don't know if I messed that up or not, but uh, re re obtaining the ATO is the only is not the only part of this process, right? We, we have to maintain ATO through rigorous maintenance. As time goes on, it, it's uh, compliance is not something that we can rest on our laurels about. So uh, yeah, and with that, I believe that ends this presentation. Once again, I am Michael Greenlaw. I am a co-founder and senior, senior consultant at Hanabyte. Please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Michael at Hanabyte is my email address. And once again, we have my LinkedIn down at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I just want to take a, a moment to say thank you for setting all this up. I, I really appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.